So rounding up um, the previous videos I've done on algebraic fractions, I just wanted to do an additional video, um, not something that I um, thought I would do, um, but I thought I'd round up everything that I've explained in those videos and some quick examples. So um, throughout this video, just pause through every question, solve all of them. Um, I'm going to scroll through all of them, try to do um, them all if you want to. So this is the first one. And um, obviously all of them is to simplify uh, to single fraction. This is the second one. We have this being the third. And then lastly, this one. Um, so have a go at them and then try and watch how I'm going to do them. I will try to avoid the tiny details because I should have explained those in the previous videos. Um, so if you're unsure about why I did certain things, try to watch the previous ones. I'm um, going to go through the first one first. So um, this is where it doesn't look like you can simplify anything. I can simplify the 16 and 8. Uh, because things are being added and subtracted. Remember, this is inside the brackets. Um, but it does seem like I can factorize. So factorization should be the trick that you will always use when you're simplifying fractions, algebraic fractions. So always think, can I, simpl can I factorize, factorize, factorize? Uh, especially when you feel like you've reached a dead end. In this case, we can. So the denominator, just you take a common factor of 2 out. And that will leave you with 3a plus 4. Now, the numerator doesn't seem like it can factorize into anything, but actually it's a difference of two squares because the 9a square is actually a square. They're both square numbers, and the 16 is a square number, and there's a minus between them. So it's actually... Um, so you square root both numbers, so you get 3a, and then you square root the 16, that's 4 and you repeat the same thing, but one will have a plus, one will have a minus. So we can immediately see that I have two fractions that are exactly the same, so I can cancel them out. And then I'm left with uh, three, 3a minus four over two, and that's as simple as it gets, so just leave it as such. Um, for the second one, sorry, jumped to the end. For the second one, um, we're adding and subtracting fractions, but this one is three fractions. And I can't change um, all of them by multiplying by one number. Um, I also, I can change the x to be 3x, or the, the, I mean, the first fraction should be the second or the third, but I can't change the 2x to be a 3x, nor can I change the 3x to be a 2x. So we'll need to multiply by a number that could go, um, I need to multiply all of them by a certain number such that they will all have the same denominator, and that should be 6. So if I multiply, that it should give me a denominator of 6. So their lowest common multiple is 6. Um, the idea just on the side is that you take all the numbers in your denominator. You have 1, you have 2, you have 3, just ignoring the x. And the lowest common multiple they have is 6. So that's the number you should get to. So I'm going to multiply this by 2, this by 3, and this by 6. And that's the smallest number I could get all of them to. Um, so that will be 12 over 6x minus 9 over 6x plus um, 8 over 6x. And I'm going to keep the denominator, bring in the numbers together, and so on. So just be careful with a minus. If this was an expression, for example, x plus 2, then the minus belongs to the whole expression. So for example, if it was minus x plus 2, then keep the brackets in there, even if there was no brackets here. So if the fraction was, if the fraction was as such, this negative belongs to the fraction. It means it belongs to both numbers. So you have to put the brackets in there. And so when you bring them together in the denominator, just multiply the negative out. So just pretend there's one here. 
I'll pretend there is an actual one there. It's a negative one and a multiply across. So just be aware of negatives um, when you're dealing with these. And then you just simplify. So I have 12 um, minus 9 plus 8. And that's going to give me... Uh, sorry, that's going to give me an 11. Um, so... Um, that's as simple as it gets, doesn't go any further, so uh, going on to the next example. Um, again, these I can't simplify just yet, and things don't cancel out, I can't factorize or anything. Um, I'm adding two fractions, denominators are not the same, and I can't change this to a plus 5, nor can I change this to a minus 3, which means I have to multiply them by each other. So I'll multiply the... I'll multiply the first fraction by the 2x plus 5, and the other one by... 2x minus 3. And I'm going to expand out the brackets. I'm just going to put this under 1. And I'm going to multiply out the brackets, just being careful that I multiply terms correctly. So I have 6x squared for the first one, 15x, 2x plus 5. And the second one is going to be just the plus I'm going to bring here and then open a massive brackets for the other one. And it's going to be 2x squared minus 3x minus 4x plus 6. Now, since I have a positive here, just multiplying out won't be an issue, so I can just ignore um, the brackets in there. The signs won't change. And just bringing all the terms together, I have a 6x squared and a 2x squared. Um, as I mentioned, because it's a positive, I can get rid of this um, bracket. If it was a negative, you have to change the signs. Um, 6x squared and 2x squared will give me the 8x squared. I have 15x and 2x, and I'm taking away 3x, and I'm taking away 4x, so that will leave me with a 10x. Um, have the 5 and the 6, so that will give me an 11. Now, as I mentioned before, you can try and um, factorize this if you need to. Um, see, depending on the marks given in the question, if you feel like it needs to, um, this doesn't actually factorize to anything nice, um, which means it won't cancel out with the denominator, so we stop there. Usually when they expect you to cancel out a quadratic, they would have asked you to factorize it previously, for example, in a part A of the question, and this would be part B. Um, so just be aware of those tricks in the exam. I'm going through the last one here. Um, this is where you we are expected to actually factorize because we are obviously here with the quadratic here. Um, so I can't simplify just yet. Let me just factorize things. Um, so the denominator, the numerator here stays the same. Let me deal with the denominator here. So if I'm going to factorize the x squared 3x minus 4, um, again, I'm gonna, not going to go through this in detail. I have explained how to factorize quadratics in a previous video. Um, so this is going to give me a factorization of x plus 1. Sorry minus 1, and then x plus 4. So um, 
this is a multiply, I have x minus 1 here. This, again, doesn't seem like it factorizes, but remember, the uh, difference of two squares, this is x minus 3, x plus 3. Um, let's put these in brackets because now it makes it easier to see how things will cancel out. The x plus 3 can cancel with the x plus 3 here only because we have a multiplication here. Remember, if it's an addition, I cannot do this step. Only because it's multiplication can I go, oh, these two cancel out. I can also cancel this x minus 1 with this x minus 1, uh, which leaves me with, this will be a 1. Remember, when things cancel out, they end up being a 1. So this is a 1 times 1, so just 1. And then I have x plus 4 and x minus 3. Minus 3. So it seems complicated, but if you just go through these main steps, all the tricks that you need to remember with algebraic fractions, um, it should be um, easy, straightforward to do. Just don't do any illegal algebraic steps in between. Remember all the tips that I've given so far.